Hi, my name is Tiernan Hebron. Uh, these are my older sisters. I am a writer and an activist and a feminist. Hi, I'm Siobhan Hebron and I'm an artist. I'm Nicole Hebron and I'm an artist and a feminist and a teacher and an organizer. Uh, we grew up with a single mom and I feel like that was definitely uh, pretty influential on our feminism. You know, we saw just a working mom just killing it, killing the game. All of my work in the last two to three years has been about illness, going through treatment for cancer, talking about the sick female body is really important to me. So when I was going through radiation, um, I did a series of zines. This is my collage of sick women, all women who are artists or, you know, in some way creative people and all have chronic or serious illnesses. My practice is performance and video and social justice. I like to be an advocate for other artists wherever possible, so I, try, I wear artist stuff all the time. This is the Top Top Top. It was created by Michelle and Robin Little. Funny way to fight the fact that women's breasts are considered inappropriate in public. I also have here some nipple pins. Recently, I made these stickers to go on advertisements, bus benches or subway ads. If you see ads that are sexist or offensive, and you just stick it right where the gays might be, maybe cleavage or whatever. Like we don't really need to see cleavage to buy a hamburger, for example. I started a my own blog um, a couple months ago. It's a social justice blog, really. My writing is very, uh, a lot of it is personal essays, a lot of it is opinion. Um, I think I try to talk about issues that are not commonly um, talked about, like um, my abortion. Uh, I recently got diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I, I, I talk about that. I uh, got initially started with activism with the Free the Nipple campaign, which is um, a grassroots movement to end or desexualize the female body and end censorship of the female body. Last year, I went to a Bernie Sanders rally with a friend and we decided to protest topless and we ended up getting arrested. All bodies are beautiful, but I feel like the manner in which they go about it is not intersectional. At the time, I didn't realize quite how privileged I was to be able to run around topless and screaming things in front of police, which women of color, um, trans women, probably wouldn't feel quite as comfortable doing. And I realized how privileged that was and how exclusive that was. So I feel like I still believe in the cause, but I believe that there has to be a better way of going about it that includes all women and all women's experiences. You're not a feminist if you're not intersectional, I think. I think my early feminism also centers around boobs. Which is sort of <laughs> sort of interesting to think about the role that breasts play in feminism. But I had really giant breasts when I was a teenager, and I got a breast reduction when I was 18. But until that time, for a few years, I was so belittled and berated and objectified that I became so aware of my body and society's relationship and response to my body. As of right now, Feminist Awakening was when I got diagnosed with a brain tumor. After that, I mean, I feel like a whole nother door even opened up into women with illness, women with disabilities. And that just really opened up, I mean, the floodgates to all different types of women. History has been male, has been masculine. There is, I mean, that's how it's been recorded, that's how it's been shown. But um, I do, I truly believe the future is female. And especially now in this particular political climate, it's more important than ever to be aware of what's been problematic for feminism throughout history and how to change that in a way that will be radically different for the future moving forward.